What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's doing good, surviving all that cold weather. Um, I'm going to do an update today of my tank. And basically, what I'm going to talk about is all the corals. Um, first thing first, I want to address uh, all of you subscribers. Um, because I hit over 4,000 subscribers now, uh, never thought I would be here. My whole goal the entire time was to eventually hit 1,000. And once I hit 1,000, it just seemed to... Uh, take off from there so thank you all i really appreciate you guys and uh, let's get into the update now the thing about these updates for me they're really cool because you know i look back at my tank maybe six months later and even some of my videos and i'm like holy crap look at how small that little frag was you know i started off with a real tiny frag smaller this than this of a uh, purple stylo now i got a huge colony of it the same thing on uh, the forums. Um, I'm on Reef Central and Reef to Reef now. Started messing around with Reef to Reef, but on uh, Reef Central, um, I used to just take a bunch of pictures. This is before the YouTube days. And uh, looking back at the pictures, it's just, like pretty amazing um, because you can see how far that I've progressed in the hobby, where I'm at on my corals, and even the equipment that I used to use. Now I consider myself lucky. I added this dotty back and I said it was an orchid dotty back. Um, I was corrected. It's actually a neon dotty back. So thanks. Uh, you know who you are. Commented and told me, dude, that's not even a orchid dotty back. Orchid dotty back is uh, purple. And uh, he also was telling me that they eat harlequin shrimp. But as you can see, there's my harlequin shrimp. Uh, still alive and kicking. This guy is uh, necessary for my tank because... He kills all the Astorina starfish, demolishes them, and uh, most importantly, protects my zoas and uh, whatever SPS I do have. I do feed these harlequin shrimp. Um, I don't have two. I know some people were saying that you need to get them in pairs. Obviously, uh, you don't. It's doing just fine with, by himself. Um, but I do feed them chocolate chip starfish. I used to feel bad about it, but uh, it's a necessary part of my reef tank. Um, like I said, he protects my SPS and Zoas. And the reason I say he protects my SPS is because I caught him eating a green slimer. And I also pointed out to uh, D when I went over to his house that he, he was eating uh, some of his his uh, Digi. So he saw that and, uh, you know, they do eat SPS. Now I did give away some of uh, this GSP. What I said, I did give it away. Um, my wife's co-workers into reef tank Vicente and uh, he was asking about some uh, corals so you know what I hooked them up with some GSP and a few other frags and um, go I went ahead and got rid of it you know I'm not really into this for the money uh, this tank really does cost me a lot of money with the corals and things like that but you know just starting off helping somebody out you know with if I have coral there and I can hook them up, then I'll hook them up. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, get rich uh, because most of the time people will lowball you. And, uh, you know, i really rather not sell it to those kind of people. But anyways, my uh, Mystic Montipora right here, I have a little bit there. I'm thinking about cutting it up and putting on some frag plugs. Um, like I said, I do like to just collect frags and uh, grow them out. One thing about uh, these frag racks is that uh, they're ugly. You know, um, and I have them all, I had them all over the front of my glass, as you can see. And what I've done is I moved them to the side of my glass so I can kind of hide them. And then I also put some of the racks into a 20 gallon long, uh, which I just started out. Um, I put a Coral Box uh, Moon LED, it's a plus. I got it from Reef Breeders. And uh, I put it over the 20 gallon frag tank, and everything's doing good so far. So I'm going to eventually put even more corals in there, jam pack it, and go from there. I want to show you my uh, purple stylo. This is an ORA purple stylo. I got it from Cultivated Reef. And uh, you can see where it's shading. The reason why is because of these uh, Montiporas. They, they, I spread them out when I first put them on the rock, but they grew into each other, started shading each other out. And um, I'm thinking about breaking the Montipora from this uh Tonga branch and uh, pitting it somewhere else and then from there just throwing some more sticks. Um, 
I have a coworker at work who's into the torches and he's thinking about getting into reefing. Uh, he's pretty much 100% there. He just hasn't committed yet. You guys know how it goes. The wife controls the uh, checkbook. But uh, the reason I brought him up is because with the torches, he was explaining to me the tank, my uh, my videos and stuff. And he said this was uh, a mop. And I started laughing because I was like, oh, the torches. Yeah, yeah. Never thought of them as a, a mop. But they're, they do kind of look like mops. Uh, very expensive mops. And uh, they're doing pretty good on my tank. Now, one of my centerpieces right here is a uh, scroll coral. I got it from Coral Lust. Coral Lust hooked me up. I know he's uh, hooked up quite a few people. And uh, this is a huge piece right here. The cool thing about it is at night, that yellow pops and it looks really good. Um, this this uh, scroll coral is a good size, almost as big as uh, my hand. And uh, it's a pretty big size right here. Really purple and adds a lot of life to the uh, tank. Now my little shrimp right here, it's uh, really out right now because I rearranged the uh, right side of the tank. You know, usually he's hiding. I uh, really don't get to see it unless I throw some food in there. But uh, right now this little guy doesn't have a chance, uh, choice because I uh, rearranged the rock like I said. Um, I had two of these uh, dark red shrimp and then I had two of the cleaner shrimp. Well, they got sniped out by my uh, wrasse. My wrasse took him out. He's a uh, meat eater. And I noticed when I don't feed heavy on the brine shrimp and uh, things like that, he goes ahead and snipes them out. Um, this is part of the green monopore that I had on top with the other monopores. I just super glued it in place. And uh, actually, I broke this on accident. Um, I didn't want to, uh, you know, sell it because I love the formations that it did and uh, it's doing really good um, I got some new greens on this side uh, my buddy Tim was telling me at one point that back in the day the new greens were super expensive and now you know people are like whatever over them but not me I love my new greens I also have some uh, purple death pallies um, they're in a different section these new greens were turned over and uh, I don't know if you guys remember but when I started my 180, um, I just had a mess all over the place. I had that sugar fine sand covering up my corals. You know, my uh, sand bed, you couldn't even see it. And uh, I just had a, a huge mess. Um, but uh, this one piece that I really want to show off, uh, I'm not too much into the greens, but it's the uh, purple and the oranges on this uh, this coral right here that make it pop. You can see that it's encrusting that frag plug and below that frag plug I super glued it onto a, another piece of uh, live rock and that live rock I cut it up in uh, some sheets. Um, I was using a hacksaw and I was cutting it up but you can see that uh, it has all these cool little eyes and uh, the orange on it, it just pops. So I'm going to show you a different angle of it and uh, I just love it. It's one of my favorite right there. So I can't wait till it encrusts some further, um, covers the whole entire frag plug and then just grows on that live rock um, because then it'll be a big, big piece. Right now, it's a little bit bigger than uh, a quarter, but um, it's going to grow grow real, real nicely. Um, this next piece that I want to show you um, is just my regular orange, um, looks like a chalice to me. Um, I picked it up from Aqua SD. Um, on the reef to reef uh, live sales, you basically they don't do it like that anymore, which sucks. And uh, what they do now mainly is um, eBay stuff, and I'm not really into uh, eBay. But this next piece right here, I got it from a uh, from the same guy, um, the guy that corrected me about the uh, per orchid dotty back. Um, well, anyways, this is a Favia. He got it as a freebie, and I traded my uh, rose bubble tip and enemy. I had. Uh, a bunch of anemones in this tank at one time. I still do. And uh, it's starting to look better there. That uh, Favia is looking good. And um, just some more of a LPS going on here. This chalice right here, if you remember, I picked it up from D. I cut it up. Uh, once he got his 300 back up, I, was, I chopped it up for him. And uh, other than that, I have like a bunch of random Montiporas. Uh, I actually 
accidentally broke a bunch of this stuff. Jedi Mind Trick, you know, regular orange Monoporas. Uh, I got a ton of uh, candy canes, and I and I love the candy canes because they cover it up, and it's amazing because they're so puffy right there. But if you touch it, um, it'll go all the way down to like a skeleton. Um, and you can see like the little sweepers on these uh, LPS out here. So I super glued a lot of those onto that rock because they were just turning over from the uh, flow in the tank. And uh, they're doing good. And there's my sniper right there, the Melanaris Ras right there. But what I've been doing is just gluing my zoanthids. Um, and what I found that works best for me is if you super glue the whole entire frag plug, not just a little bit of drop on the bottom of the frag plug um, that uh, they stay more secure and it, putting them on the edge like this makes them grow a little bit different a little bit more funny and they spread out and they seem to be doing really good um, this is my little skeleton uh, rock that I had drilled out on I did a video on how to aquascape and uh, it's doing good um, what I did to clear up a lot of my frags my frag racks is I've been putting them on the floor and I got these discs. I got these discs from uh, Amazon. There were a hundred uh, frag plugs for, I think, twenty-five dollars. But uh, they're not the best quality. They're really thin, but uh, they are doing the job. Um, as you can see, I just super glued a whole bunch of frags onto them. Uh, one so that they don't flip over, and two so that uh, they do they'll do good. And you can see, got a whole bunch. Um, these are some agaves that I got right there. Started off with one head. I did a video and I got it from a, a buddy, Albert. And now you can see I have uh, multiple heads, at least six or seven, maybe eight coming out now. But they're doing really good. They glow at night. They look ugly on the, the website. Uh, they sell them on cultivatedreef.com. But they look ugly on the website. But in person, they look pretty awesome. One thing that I never did, I did get around to renting out my sand from my old 120. I rinsed it out. It smelled like crap. Uh, basically, I had all kinds of dead stuff in it. Rinsed it out real good. Dried it. Rinsed it out some more. And uh, I just never put it in the uh, on my tank, on my sand bed. What I am thinking about doing, though, is uh, still using the same sand and putting it in the sump uh, and then using it as a uh, deep sand bed slash uh, refugium. Uh, but as you can see, I got a lot of uh, zoas right here all over the place um, they're starting to spread and uh, the, these smaller uh, frag discs are from a uh, bulk resupply now I saw, was watching some videos from Coralus and uh, when they sent me some uh, frags uh, I noticed that they had like the best frag plugs that I've ever seen they were actually frag discs and even on the bottom they said uh, Coralus which is pretty cool just a uh, small details like that are uh, make them stand out now these red people eaters I actually got them from coral less um, I had some before as you can see on the right hand side but uh, they're doing really good they're spreading I actually had to move them and uh, they didn't want to move because they were stuck but I guess they were growing on the glass but I, I finally got them to move but uh, people eater zoas pallies whatever you want to call them are some of my favorite and you can identify that people eater because they have that big, they're big and fat and they have like that little eye in the middle. And uh, they're usually green and it's just an awesome dark color. But these next ones that I have are, I don't know the name of those zoanthids. I, I try to keep up, but uh, these ones are awesome because they have that little ring around them. And then I, I, I want them to go ahead and spread and grow all out on this rock. Um, just cover this entire rock because these are sweet. Um, I do have Aptasia. I still have my uh, peppermint shrimp. I spotted him the other day when I was moving the right side of my tank. But that little guy hasn't done nothing. I know people are like, get a whole bunch of peppermint shrimp and they'll they'll do damage. But uh, they haven't done nothing for me. Um, my candy apples right there. also got those from uh, Aqua SD. And uh, I thought I was going to get my butt kicked from the wife uh, when I smashed her uh, pink's bird nest. I didn't mean to uh, do it on purpose. The rock just fell and uh, broke off into a million pieces. So, of course, I had to uh, super glue them. And then uh, hopefully they'll grow out and then I can have a whole colony again. But this Aptasia is pretty uh, 
bad. It's they're nice and strong and they're healthy, growing out really good. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and torch them with some uh, super glue, some super glue gel, and then I'll probably hit them up with just a regular super glue. And then uh, I've already tried the Aptasia X, which uh, didn't seem to work. I mean, they went away at first, but it just came back stronger, uh, like they were on roids or something. But the cloves are in the background. They're loving it there. They're doing good. Uh, this Mystic Ponte Pora right here, uh, it did good. It totally covered up the frag plug. Now it's all over this uh, live rock. And uh, this brand, this GSP right here, uh, it's some of the best GSP around. And it's uh, doing really good. As you can see, it's grown on the uh, glass. I also have some uh, Red Planet right next to that Mystic Ponte Pora. It grew a little uh, branch, so I'm pretty happy about that. And at one time, it was really red. It's not uh, dead yet, but uh, it's seen better days. It's still starting to come out a little bit, but uh, I don't know. It's messing with the light right now. Uh, but other than that, um, these little flower things, polyps are all over the place. And uh, here's where I really can't wait for these zoas to grow out. I have one right there. And I glue it to the rock, and what it is is a, a scrambled egg right there. I have some Fruit Loops and uh, some uh, Rastas right there. The Fruit Loops are below the tank. But the fun thing about this is in another six months or a year, this whole branch should be covered with uh, Zoanthids. Those Rastas should be further up because they're growing pretty fast. Uh, the Fruit Loops on the bottom will be more full. The scrambled egg on the top will be more than just one little polyp. And all those little frag discs that you saw on the uh, where the sand bed is supposed to go will be more full out. And uh, that bird's nest that I broke will be back together. Well, guys, thanks again. I uh, really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks again for the uh, over 4,000 subscribers. And probably when I get a little bit more subscribers, we'll do another contest. Just my way of giving back. And we'll have uh, maybe more than one winner. Um, thanks, guys. You guys have a good one. Like, subscribe, and guys, take care.